the biggest sources of inefficiency are not on the team. They're across teams and how the teams come together to deliver work. And, and, and being able to look across those, identify those, help the organization see those and prioritize those for improvements were some of the biggest wins we got, right? We decided we needed to go and invest a lot in test automation. We realized trunk was getting broken quite a bit. And so we had to create quality gates. There was just a whole bunch of things that as an executive looking over the thing, we needed a different approach. And, and then the other thing that when you're driving a change like this, there are big organizational changes, right? We need the people to embrace new ways of working. And you can influence that maybe within your team. It's hard to influence across teams. And as a, in a leadership role, we've got to take that. And one of the biggest things we did is we did Agile upside down, right? We didn't go to consultants. We, we learned ourselves how to learn and adapt and do that sort of piece. And, and how to do that. And there were big changes like, you know, when we started this, traditionally we would have gone into a planning session to plan this three release and spend a few months. And instead of that as a leadership team, we said, well, we're, we're get, we can't come up with a plan and ask for more resources because there aren't any more. We've got this deadline, we gotta get it done. Let's focus on our energies on how to get it done. And we went down this path of saying, what can we get done in the next 30 days and what will make the biggest difference? And we started with yeah. the architecture and then month by month, we learned and adjusted. And at the end of it, we were bringing in 70, 75,000 lines of code to our model a month. We had probably 10,000 hours of automated testing for all the different products running on a bunch of different servers every day. And we're keeping those passing at 90%. And if you would have told us that was possible in the beginning, we would have told you you were crazy. I mean, it yeah. was so radically different than anything that we'd ever done. It, it it wouldn't work. And and until you lived it and felt it, you didn't realize what was possible. And so if you're gonna if you're gonna like do a prescriptive plan for how to do this, how do you plan for something you don't even think is possible? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and 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 that, that I think that. You, you know, the, the, the secret to that is, which I think is interesting, is, is, is I think you, you said the secret to that easily earlier, which is that is that small steps thing is that, you know, that that willing to, as Kent Beck said, embrace change, but but take that kind of experimental mindset of saying, you know, as you said, what can we do now that's going to have an impact next month or next week or, you know, within a few days or whatever it is, how, you know, let's let's try and work on those kinds of time horizons and yes we've got that flag on the hill of where we want to get to that, that set our constraints and set our sense of direction but we don't know what all of the steps are and it's wrong for us to predict what all the steps are at the beginning we're going to we're going to define what the step what the route is small step at a time as we learn more and, and what are we going to monitor it's, it's yes. really interesting <clears throat> I think one of the biggest mistakes leaders take is I want to come up with metrics so I can measure the teams and know how the teams are doing and hold them yeah. accountable for delivering on what they need to deliver for the business. Yeah. Instead, we need to think of these metrics as how do we monitor how this complex adaptive system is evolving so yes. we know how to influence the priorities to make sure it's evolving in the right way to deliver the business value that we need to do. So instead of the leaders being something outside the team holding them accountable. We need to engage with the teams. We need to look across the teams. We need to monitor how it's evolving. And as Deming says, leader's job is, is, is to create systems that enable employees to be successful. Yes. And, and, and I don't, I see very few software leaders playing that role. And yeah. I see lots of software leaders saying, okay, I'm empowering you, I'm getting out of the way, but I need a way to measure and drive you and hold you accountable yeah. and try to force you to behave. At the same time, they're driving on things and they don't understand the frictions of getting in the way. And if you want the organization to improve, you got to understand the friction in the system, prioritize removing it and making it more efficient so that people can be successful in the jobs that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 that that's so pervasive, and so, some of that, some of those 
inappropriate measures are so pervasive that they it's really really hard to get past them i you know i i i think of um the idea of hitting deck of you know define you know optimizing to make sure that you can uh, uh hit your deadlines it is a mistake what's the point of hitting your deadline if you're doing the wrong thing so 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 what so i i'd much rather optimize to be able to make progress efficiently in small steps and and that seems like a much more efficient way of working than trying to arbitrarily hit some predefined you know release date or whatever else and of course you know release dates matter and that sort of thing is important to a business but there are lots of other things in business that don't work like that if you you know if you set a business target of for profitability um that's not necess- you know and you don't make it you know on the day that you said that you're going to make it that's not deemed a failure it, you know it's a tool that you use to head for it's it might be something that you use as a direction of travel but it's not a meaningful goal you know if 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 i get there sooner does that mean i'm wrong that's it's just it's just it's just kind of crazy to me. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.